strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. So we did a little poll recently, and apparently you guys love Sasquatch stories. Good to know. So to feed that need, here are three stories that detail encounters with the big, hairy, smelly beast. There's a monster out there. It was 1974. I was 20 at the time, and I was traveling from California to Canada together with two friends and three dogs in a van. Our goal was to find work in Canada, and then eventually move further north and live off the grid. Of course, living off the grid then is a little bit different than living off the grid now. Heck, we only had four channels to watch on television at home. Well, anyway, we stopped one afternoon at a KOA camp in Idaho. Our campsite was about 50 feet from the tree line. There was a small stream just to the south of us. We pitched our tent and set up the rest of camp. The two other guys took the dogs and walked to the nearest town for some food. A few minutes after they left, I walked over to the stream to wash up. I had some road grime and I just wanted to get clean in a mountain stream. I knelt down and I felt the icy water. There were some broken shells on the ground around me, perhaps from fishing bait. I was contemplating the temperature of the water before taking a dip when I noticed small pebbles hitting the ground next to me. Now, although our campsite was the only one occupied at the camp, my thought was that there must be some kids nearby having a good time. I ignored it. I didn't want to give the kids the satisfaction that they were bothering me. The pebbles continued to fly and ploop in the water or land near me on the shoreline. And then I noticed a really strong, musky smell. And I got the feeling like someone or something was watching me. I also noticed that the flying pebbles were getting larger. And then one hit me hard on the back. Well, that was enough of that. These kids would have to be confronted, it seemed. So giving up the idea of a bath, I stood up slowly and turned toward the tree line. I couldn't see anybody, but... I still smelled that awful, garbage-like smell. So much for the clean, fresh Idaho mountain air. Were we near a trash dump? I walked toward the tree line and saw a small path leading to my right, pine trees on both sides and a steep mountain directly in front of me. I glanced to my left and froze, standing no more than three feet from me was a tall Sasquatch. My eyes traveled up to look directly at its face. It must have been eight, nine feet tall. It looked directly at me. I was able to stifle a scream and instead just let out a little gasp very slowly. I looked down passively and slowly brought my hands up near my waist like a, a puppy to demonstrate I'm no threat. I brought my eyes back up to him and he gave me a disgusted look. He made a chuffing sound. I responded with a single, quiet whimper and held my head slightly to the side. At that point, he seemed curious and began to look at my small hands and examining with his eyes my blonde hair and blue eyes. The creature's eyes were very intense, but also what I deemed as curious and, I don't know, intelligent? I avoided extended eye contact, but glanced long enough to see its features clearly. It had an orangish hair, and again, it smelled very, very badly. I had to choke back a gag or two while I was frozen there. It seemed like we were at an impasse. It glanced at the trail to my right. I was standing on the trail. I took a step back off the trail. He passed me with large strides and continued into the thick forest, disappearing after about 50 feet. The smell also thankfully dissipated with its departure. I walked back to camp and 
tried to calm myself as best as possible. When the other two returned, I didn't mention anything about the confrontation I had had in the woods. I figured there was no way they would believe me. That night, I was able to drift off to sleep only because I was completely wiped out. But I was awakened by the dogs going crazy, and I heard a voice outside the tent that sounded like high-pitched gibberish. It wasn't from the dogs. It was from something else. One of the guys went outside the tent and started yelling and saying, Get out of here! After a few minutes, he came back inside and he was upset. He said, Don't go out there. There's a monster out there. The next morning, all of our food that was on the camp table was gone. But I felt fortunate that the creature did not hurt me or the other two guys or the dogs. And I felt fortunate that when I came face to face with it, it left me alone. To be honest, I was happy to share our food with it, but I never went back in the forest again. This has been another Strange But True Stories. Let us know what you thought of these stories in the comments below. If you have a strange encounter you'd like to share with us, send it to us in an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. We're on Patreon now. If you'd like to support what we do, click the link below. Those at $3 per month and higher are eligible for additional material. Thanks to all of our new Patreon folks, such as Jessica, Kelly, the Sunny Iced Queen, Dave, Isaac, and Liliana. And thanks for listening to these stories, and we appreciate the support. I'm Steve White. Until next time.